Hello, welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Now today was that lovely a day, I felt like I had to get out on the boat. Unfortunately we've got quite a strong easterly which makes fishing in the bay not very nice. So I've just uh, set myself up, just fishing just up in the river. I mean, you can see where I am, it's quite a lot of boat traffic but it's nice and sheltered and it's a bonny day. All I've got is I've been got set up real quick we're, we're just on a flood uh, we're about an hour after low water and the water is going in that direction now if you've watched any of my videos before you know that I always like to get set up now I'll get the camera on well I'm before I'd even manage to get the camera out first fish of the day bonny little schoolie bass. Now all I'm fishing is I'm just fishing ragworm and live pro. Uh, that one was on a running ledger. I'm just having a little bit of a mix it up. It's all weird, it? As I was just saying. So <laughs> without them. The silver reel, freshwater reel. Keep an eye on them rods in the background and get what I'm talking about. This. Yeah, on this rig I'm just using a Wessex rig, which is uh, also known as a one up one down. I'll put a link into here to show you how to make these rigs, but none of them are very complicated. This one, look, you can see I was just fishing ragworm on the bottom and I've caught a snotty eel. I can get this guy unhooked quickly before he tires me and get a load of nuts. As slippery as an eel. It might get a bit noisy as boats are going past us, but yeah. You can see where I am in too. There he is. Yeah, all I'm doing is I'm fishing live prawn or I'm fishing uh, ragworm. Uh, on a running ledger or on that one, letting me see, I've got Wessex rig. On the other rod that I've got, the taller one. I'm actually experimenting with Dyson rig with light pro. See if it's any good for, for bass and bream. We're just out to catch anything today, so every fish is a bonus. And then we'll maybe move a little bit further on down the river now that now that people are starting to get busy. There was a lot of people down there uh, like wakeboarding uh, bodyboard, whatever it's called, where you stand up on the board. So I wanted to avoid them. Now there's that much traffic up here, I might move on somewhere. I think it's just little bream look just savaging the bay. I'm just getting like da -da 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 -da. Little tiny wrapping bites. If it persists and I can't hook one, I want to scale down the hooks. But at the moment, this is just a, a 1 0 stinger. Let's see if I've got some size 2s or something like that. We'll see if I can't find that one again. All I do is I've got some hook lengths already pre-baited. Just take one off and just clip on another one that's ready to go. I just have, have a couple of three pre-baited and in the shade because bream are surely, if you get them run through, you want to be able to capitalise on that straight away. Uh, straight away, can you see it on this rod here? It's a bite straight away. Can't seem to find them. They're just savaging them baits. Well, do I think I'll make some little tiny hook ribs? Straight on the bite again, look. Has to be a shoal of little bream. I 
Oh. Another one of them. Oh, I tell you what, if that's all I'm going to be catching here, I'm going to be moving. Just a rig record. Same again with that one. We're going to have to very quickly get this rig made. <laughs> a really good bite. I mean, he's digging hard so I'm hoping bream could be ras but I'm hoping for bream. Just what I wanted. God oh, tell you what it's a beauty as well. Please please don't come off. Yes, it's in the net. That is a cooch bream. That was what I was hoping for. Oh, and the hook's just come out in the net. Isn't that stunning? Look at that. What an absolute beautiful fish. And these scrap, you saw how hard that scrap there. It was a fantastic bite. Let's get him in this bucket here. <laughs> that was what I wanted. I didn't want to say it at the start of the video because of the blade. Oh yeah, he never caught one. That was what I was after today. That's actually a really good size one as well. Quite a lot of them you get, they're only like this big. That was caught when I could untangle it. It's all mad it up now. That was caught on a Wessex rig. You can see, look what I had on the bottom. Live prone and ragworm. Same on the top. Live prone on ragworm, and that was a that was a one o cox and roll chino. Fantastic, I mean, they've got a really hard mouth. I'll show you it in a minute when it's calmed down. But ah, that was a savage bite. Made up with that. Couldn't hazard a guess of what it weighs. I'd say probably well, more than more than a couple of pounds. Get some more water in there. Sort this rig out, get it back out, and we'll have a look at that fish. Yeah, look at this. What an absolute stunner. I don't know if you can see them teeth there. It's got like two big fangs at the start, right at the front. Got some proper crunches. You can hear him crunching every now and again. Won't keep him out of the water too long. Get him revived in there properly, and then we'll get him back. <laughs> I'm made up. Okay, look, we've revived it as much as we can. Hold his head up into the current. Try and get some aerated water over his gills. Look at them colours. They're just amazing. Hold it up into the current and when it's ready to go, it'll tell you. There you go, look. And away it goes. Oh, that was brilliant. Extra happy now that I've seen it swim off. One of the rigs that I'm experimenting with, and I say experimenting with, I'm always testing and trying and adapting and trying to figure out what works best, what doesn't work, what what I can use in different scenarios. This is the Dyson rig. Now I've been, I've used this before in a different session. It is, this is how it sits in the water. That's it, the weight sits on the bottom. This float holds your hook length up in the tide. A live prone like that, flapping about. Should be resistible. It's good if there's any like weed on the bottom, just like little green stuff. The only problem with it at the moment is there's that much of it floating past. It keeps fouling the float 
and the float ends up snagging and the bait ends up on the bottom of the crab's keep getting it. So although it, although it would be good for this type of situation because there was too much floating weed, but well, that's this. I'm going to switch this over to a running ledger now and I might pop it up with some beads off the bottom. The, uh, the main target species, like I said earlier, was, <laughs> was anything really, but I had in my mind that I wanted to catch bream, specifically a cooch bream. I didn't want to say too much at the start of the session because I thought I might jinx myself, and I am quite superstitious like that. Now that I've caught one, I can kind of talk about it. All I'm doing for these, uh, these running ledger bees, just really simple. Oh, I use, I use these uh, chewing gum bottles to keep my little bits and bobs in. All I've come with today is I've just brought a little bucket full of stuff. I've just got a mixture of hooks, some line for hook lengths, which is 15 pound fluoro, and a few rigs on winders, an assortment of little leads. I haven't got anything that's heavier than about three ounces. But all I was going to do was just a light scratching session inside like this, so you don't need a lot. There's no point taking loads of gear. All you need is a slider, a bead, and a swivel. Worth winding that in anyway because I've been pretty much stripped a bit. Take off the hook length, put on a pre baited one. Top. You'll have seen my videos, I've, I've usually got a couple of three rods out. It isn't always easy fishing that many rods. Because, like when people come past in their boat too close and they end up getting... I've had it happen today. There's a bloke somewhere down there now. He knows who he is. I know who he is. He's done it twice to me today. You can see I've been fishing. I've been fishing here for about four hours now. And he's come past me real close every time, and I mean like within 10 feet. One of the times, like he saw that I had a rod out on the side like that, and it floats on it, just steamed straight over the top of it, and pulled up, nearly pulled the rod in. Some people are just, um, well, there's a name for him, there's a word for him. Oh, a spider on the lens. Sliding ledger rig, and I can find all the little bits. All you're doing is do, just thread, slider on first, then your bead, you all keep an eye on them rods behind me. Fish with a relatively light drag when you're fishing for bream. Because they can have anything from like a real savage bite, like that cooch is there. Or it can be like a little tiny pecking mouthing bite. And they'll, they'll, they'll then pick it up. Like, feel around, they haven't got any hands. So if they're going to be investigating anything, they're going to be investigating it with their mouth. Like bass, they'll suck in a bit and then blow it out. Suck it in and then taste it and spit it out again and then if they like it they'll pick it back up again which is why sometimes when you're fishing for bass you'll get like a double bite if you strike on the first one you'll miss it so you wait for the, for the second bite bream can do that pick a bait up like that and swim away with it for a bit and if they like it they'll swallow it if they feel any resistance like from a tight drag they can spit it out so it's, it's good to either fish with light drag or even the bait runner reel bait runner reels are ideal One ounce lead. Just clip that in there like that. Okay, well, that's a nice boat. A million dollars worth of boat there. I haven't got any rod holders though. I don't know how many boat without any rod holders. Yeah. It's a 
sliding lead like that and all I've got is like a two foot hook length of 15 pound fluoro and that is a 1-0 cox roll chin with a couple of ragworms on the reason why I use um, I'm using a fluoro hook length because I've been having good results with fluoro hook lengths lately the reason I use 15 pound 15 pound might seem quite strong but gilt heads gilt heads coaches they have real strong bite and they have a lot of teeth they can bite through they can crush weaker hooks which is why I like chinooks and they can snip through weaker hook lengths which is why I'm using 15 Bream as I've said before they are a shoaling fish and they do run in with the tide which is why I got myself here at low tide because I knew they would be running in that direction the problem being now is they've probably gone all the way past me and they're somewhere up river now when you are specifically targeting bream you can follow them like if you catch them here and then the bites drop off you know they've moved past you so steam I don't know half a mile up river and start fishing again and you'll catch them because they'll get to you now I can't, I'm, I'm only just having a bit of fun and I've caught what I wanted to catch, I'm, I'm very happy. So I'm not going to bother chasing them. Now you can fish them twice because they've gone that way with the flooding tide, that means they're going to come back this way with the ebbing tide. So if you're going to fish it out for a long time, you could do I'm just, I'm just happy to see. Caught a bit too much sun though, I think. Face is feeling a little bit red. I put some suntan lotion on, but Jesus, feeling it now. You can see which side the sun's been on, can't you? I've got one red arm and one white arm. I think that we have, what time is it now? We have about another hour of the flood. So we'll stick it out until I water and then we'll look at going back. But this is the type of weed that's drifting through. So you just end up with loads of it on your line. It's like long, oh well this one's probably the <laughs> best part of 10 foot long like long strips that just hold onto the line which is why I couldn't use that Dyson rigging which is why the floats are, I've had to stop using the floats this is the type of weed you can see on the bottom and then when you've got a bait on the bottom that's all that happens so I'm going to use some beads and pop them up a bit I'll show you now real quick while we've, we've not got a lot of boats around so there's not a lot of noise there's two different ways that I bait up with live prawns. You've seen one of them on the circle hook that I had on the Dyson rig, whereas you just... Prawn like that. Now, these are still alive, just not very because they've been sat in warm water for most of the day. Now all you do is you just take the circle hook and you hook it through the middle of this bend here. The other way which is the way that I present them on a J-hook like this. This can be quite fiddly. What you need to do is you need to get the end of the tail and you're going to start putting the hook in there. And all you do is you just thread it down the prawn like that, bending it up over the hook and then pull it out when you get to there, look. See there, look how the hook point is proud. The hook is all the way up the prawn and it can still crawl around on the bottom. All you need to do now, take a tiny bit of bait elastic, and I mean just a little bit, and all you're gonna do is you're just gonna whip the fan at the end of the tail to the eye of the hook. Like that. There you go, perfectly presented, prone or walk about on the bottom, hook points proud, brilliant bait caught loads of fish, loads of fish presenting prawns like that. Feeling the sun. <laughs> I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be like a tomato by the time I get home. Another snotty eel. There must be blooming loads of them here. They are just rig wreckers. They just writhe about and scrap like that until they've tied your rig up in knots. Half the time as well you can't get the hook out because look it's swallowed that little tiny hook I'm going to have to cut it off inside of it. Luckily enough they're, right, they're tough as nails. He wasn't hanging about. 
That's like five of them we've had now. We had one that was quite big. But I'd still rather not catch them. Just see, I've been out a couple of times. I went out on the shore the other day as well. And then I could only catch small eels. Catching small congos about that big. Better than catching now, but I'd trade ten one pounders for one ten pounder. This is this is one of the problems that you get. You see, like this, it's almost like lettuce weed, isn't it? Any baits get hidden in the bottom in that, they'll never find it. That's why it pays sometimes to pop them up a little bit. I mean, even though they're not getting getting pestered by crabs, when it's all hidden in the weed, the fish isn't going to find it, is it? The best fish came off, came to the hooks that were up off the bottom. Big patch of weed on there. Well, used up the last of my worms. Just on the tow rods there at the back. It's uh, wow, I felt the sun today. I'm just up at high water now. Just going up to high water slack. And, uh, wanted to go out in the bay earlier on, but because of the bad east lease, couldn't do it. Doesn't mean you can't have a fantastic day fishing just somewhere sheltered in shore. I mean, you can see where I am. Got busy enough around me. It hasn't put the fish off too much. And, uh, kept it simple. Ragworm and live prawn. Missed another fantastic bite about half an hour ago. It was um, same rig, same rod again, and same bait. It was uh, a ragworm with a live prawn on the hook, which just goes to show that it, that was the same one that got the coach. Uh, real savage. Rod gave two real big heavy nods. When I picked it up, another couple of lunges and then was just gone. And when I brought it up, all the prawn was smashed to pieces. Just didn't have the drag set perfect. I'd, I'd still left it a bit tight from landing that fish before. My fault. You win some, you lose some. Um, I hope you, uh, I hope you saw it just by keeping it simple. It was only running ledger, Wessex rig, or I used the Dyson rig. It didn't work too well today because there was too much weed in the water. But you will see that rig again. I'm always switching it up and, and trying to experiment with stuff because you never know what might be the next best thing. hope you've enjoyed watching it please if you think your friends are going to like it share on the video get them to subscribe and hit the notification button and then have a nice day